Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. My name is Mike. You can catch me on Twitch at StillNFAC. That's one word, and on YouTube at Not Fooling Around Crew, that's two words. Today, we're going to tune up the 2019 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. This is a truck that you can win in this season. Uh, it's an exclusive truck, I believe. So let's take a look at some of the upgrades. And basically, I'm going to show you guys how I tune the gears. That's that's the purpose of this video. We want to do a gearing video, more or less. So the rest of the build is secondary. We're gonna we're gonna build it, but more importantly, we're gonna focus on the gears. So let's get right into the upgrades. Um, I already know that this is an all-wheel drive truck, and the powertrain is just fine for the build that we're gonna make, and we're gonna keep it naturally aspirated. I'm not gonna touch any of the aero and the tires. Uh, I would look at the tires when I'm choosing my tires. The main thing I focus on is lateral G's and PI cost. The stock tires put you at 0 0.84, 0 0.83 with the upgrades that I've already got on here. And the upgraded off-road race tires are 8484 8, lateral G's. So there's really not much of a difference there. Even though it says 0 0.12 grip, I don't believe it. I don't see that represented in the 0 to 100 or the 0 to 60 times. Actually, you get faster 0 to 60 and 0 to 100 on the stock tires. So I don't believe the off-road tires are better, especially not for 34 PI. So we're going to keep the stock tires on. Um, I'm going to keep the stock front and rear tire width on as well. Since we're all-wheel drive, it's less important than it would be for, say, rear-wheel drive to upgrade the rear tire width. But that's something we can come back to in the future. Actually... You know what sometimes hey look at that yeah we're actually are going to upgrade the rear tire width because it adds weight and it lowers our pi so we're moving from 32 532 down to 530 and we're going to get more um lateral g's out of it lateral g's are the most important thing usually so that's where we're adding that there uh, let's take a look at the platform and handling i've already thrown on the race front and rear anti-roll bars and the full race roll cage we're gonna leave the weight reduction stock we don't care about weight so much since we're building off-road and then we're gonna put as much power in it as possible boom power 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 when you're building for off-road your first goal is to get as much power as possible so we're gonna throw in as much power as we can And it puts us shit, right in the middle of a class, more or less, but that's okay. Alright, so here for the transmission, I like to run race clutch with the race differential. And then last, I'll do the drive line. If I can upgrade the drive line, I will. So we're going to go with the transmission, and I like to use a race transmission. They shift faster, and the six-speed transmission is always lighter than the seven, which is lighter than the eight, which is lighter than the nine, which is lighter than the ten. So just for me personally, I like to use the six-speed. This one doesn't say six, but I know it is. So you have six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and it'll always show six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, the one that's not labeled is the one that's missing. So this says race. This one says seven. This one says eight. This one says nine, and this one says ten. So we know by process of elimination, this is a six-speed. All right, so we've got plenty more PI to add. So we're at 659. We're going to get it to the top of B class if possible. So that's where this truck is going to land. And our options are going to be by reducing the weight. 684, 709. So we're going to try and get it down to B700. And how I'm going to do that is by removing. Ooh, we might be able to add a rear wing here. Hold on. Bring this to 708. It's not necessary though. We're gonna throw it on there anyways. And then we're gonna remove some power. Now let's take off. I'm gonna take off the ones that remove weight. That's good. And then there we go. B700. Alright, perfect. We're at 700 now. Just want to check one more thing. All right, that's good enough. Okay. All right. All right, so what we're going to do, I want to show you guys how I tune the gears. So we're going to go to 
custom tuning here. I'm going to go straight to the gears. Now, what I do when I'm tuning my gears is I, I look first, at first I focus on the 0 to 100 time. Now, if you look at the bottom here at this chart right here, this is your RPMs on the left, and it shows your red line is about 7,400. Your red line is about 7,400 RPM. And then this, this truck approximately can go up to 183 miles per hour. So we're going to try and get all of our gears in this box here because anything out to the right, as you can see, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth are represented in the chart, but sixth isn't even on the chart. So we're going to... We're going to try and get all of those gears in the chart here while maximizing our 0 to 60 time and 0 to 100 time. And how we do that first is by adjusting our final drive ratio. We're going to try and get the fastest 0 to 100 time that we can find. Uh, and let's do that. We're going to start all the way to the left. Remember at 10001 right now. All right, and you can see here it went up to 11.0. We're going to go back to the right towards acceleration, 0 0.05 every time till we get better than 10.001. And we're moving up pretty quick, which is good. We got to about a 10.2, but even that's not fast enough. Back to 10 0, thankfully. Come on, let's get faster than that. Let's try and get this thing down to like a 9 7 or something. I hope at least, right? Nine eight. Come on, baby, keep going. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, it looks like we're stalling. Damn it, we went back up. That might be as fast as we're going to get this thing 0 to 100. Right there, 98930 to 100. Might be the fastest. We're going to keep checking just, just, just because we can. And another reason we're going to keep checking to the right is because we still only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gears represented in our chart. So we're going to keep going to the right because... We could end up see, because if so, say all six of our gears were represented right now if all six of my gears were shown on the chart and I keep moving the final drive to the right what it's gonna do is gonna lower my top speed eventually it'll start lowering my top speed we only have 167.6 mile per hour top speed anyways that's all we're gonna basically get out of this truck and that's based on horsepower and aerodynamics a car can only go so fast based on horsepower torque aerodynamics things like that um, better aerodynamics lets you go with a higher top speed we have a rear wing on it putting down force you can adjust your down force but more or less we're limited to top speed based on horsepower and aerodynamics so anyways we're going to keep going to the right but what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to take some notes get my trusty pad out i always have a pad with me when i'm gaming um so the final drive is 3.77 and the 0 to 100 time is 9.893 we're gonna try and beat 9.893 and I've got you Tariq and I've got you Rias alright so let's keep moving to the right we're gonna try and beat 9.893 And I'm not sure we're going to do it because once you get to a certain point, you you're, you're lose efficiency by adding shifting. Like So between 0 to 60 right now, we have um, a shift from 1st to 2nd, possibly a shift from 2nd to 3rd. So we have two shifts, and those shifts take time. So if you put like six gears in there, that means it's a shift six times. You know, between I'm saying if you put six gears in between zero and sixty, that technically it should be accelerating faster, but the shift time slows you down because it takes time to make the shift. You're, it's not instantaneous; it takes time. 
So you do use a not sunk loss. It would be um like a like a point of di diminishing diminishing returns. So the point of diminishing returns, like at some point, it becomes faster to just stop shifting, having so many shifts in there. If that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you, Flame. I got to keep an eye on that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on the 0 to 100. I'm moving it to the right. And what you can see here is that I'm moving it more to the right. And we're really close to where we were. We were at 9.89. But you're going to see the, the final gear is 6 gear. It's going to keep moving to the left. So we're actually going to start losing top speed. We need it to, to get faster now or it's not worth the cost because we're losing top end. You can see it losing a little bit of top end every time. And now it's the actual 0 to 100 time is going back up. So there we go. That that just shows us that 377 was approximately where we want to start at. So we're going to go back to 377. And we're going to make some minor adjustments from there. Um, so there you see it, 9893. I like the rightmost one of those. Is that they're at 380? We're gonna check all of them just to keep the 9.983 is what we're looking at. And we can also start looking at your 0 to 60 time as well here. And you can see 4.045 is the best one. Let's see if we get a 9.983 better with a 4045. Uh, 9.983 at 4045 there at 372. And now it's going back up. All right, so we're gonna go to the rightmost one of them, which is I think 380. Yeah, okay. So at 380, we have a 4.045 and a 9.983. Now we also wanna make sure that we're utilizing all six gears here. And the reason we wanna do that is because when you're turning, if your gears are too long, so you take a turn and your truck slows down and then you're trying to come back out of the turn. Um, if your gear is too long, you won't get the proper acceleration. So we want as many gears as we can without having too many gears. Oh God, it's tough to explain, but you need to be using the right amount of gears for the, for the right amount of horsepower. If you have a ton of horsepower, you can use more gears. Shit, you can even use less gears. Just, just. For this case, we want all of our gears here. We're using the six speed. We're gonna try and get all the gears in here to get, help us get through the gears a little easier. So what I'm gonna to do to do that, um, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna make fifth gear a lot smaller. We're gonna make fourth gear a lot smaller. And what I'm doing, oh shit, I didn't wanna to touch that one. And all I'm doing here is I'm trying to make it so that we can get six gear in the chart. So there we go. And I'm gonna point six gear right at the top of the chart um, where you can see this here. I want six gear to point right there. Now that's not ideal every time, and it's not where we're gonna leave it. That's just for now. It's where we're leaving it for now. So you can see I did something that fucked us up, and that was um, so our zero to hundred time is back up to ten one. And the reason it's like that is because I moved fourth gear. What you see here on this chart is first gear is represented right there, second gear is there, third gear is there, fourth gear is here. Now. You can also see down here that it says 92 miles an hour. So fourth gear, well, third gear is, is where we're getting to 92. Fourth gear is touching at 100. So this is this gear here is adjusting our 0 to 100 time. We need to put that back where it was. And there we should get the right time again. You see that? Now I've got our 9.983. But we know we need that shorter. So I'm actually going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to push that to the right as much as I can without it stopping that 9.983. We're gonna keep going to the right, make that as short as possible and keeping that 9.893. Beautiful, right there. So 141 is where we're gonna keep fourth year and that actually makes fifth and sixth look pretty good. Um, so let's go back to first, second and third. So these three and these four gears are, you can see where these four gears are represented on the chart. We have benchmarks for these four gears. We can see our zero to 60 time because these gears, first and second, 
and possibly third will adjust your zero to 60 time because you can see on the chart here this is somewhere around 60 miles an hour would be so you can see first gear and second gear will get you to 60 miles an hour maybe third so we know by adjusting these two gears we can adjust our zero to 60 time and we're going to try and do that this is becoming this is a little more in depth than i had planned to make this video but this is how i do it this is what i do for my tuning every single tune so what i'm doing now is i'm moving first gear towards the acceleration i'm going to try and get it the 0 to 60 time faster by going to the right it's actually messed up our 0 to no it's making our 0 to 100 time better and so if it's making our 0 to 100 time better that's because it's making our 0 to 60 time faster you see that now we're down to 4028 let's keep going we've got a better 0 to 60 and a better 0 to 100 time now because we're adjusting first gear Trucks faster, you're faster 0 to 60, you're faster 0 to 100. And we're going to keep going this way until it starts messing up. Look at that, 9857. Look at that, 4011. I think that's probably where we're, that's probably the best we're going to get. So we're going to put that back at the leftmost 4011-9857. All right, there we go. Now let's go adjust second gear, see if we can do anything to make it faster. We're going to go to the right first, which is acceleration. And the reason we go to the right is because you actually do want your gears as short as possible. That way you'll accelerate through the gears faster. Look at that. We just jumped from a 4011 to a 3994. Let's keep going. Now I can tell you from experience by looking at this chart that we're getting pretty good. This is almost where we want it to be. And it's going backwards the other way, so I'm going to back it up just a little bit. There we go. And let's just adjust third, see if there's anything we can do. And there may not be. Yeah, there's nothing we can do to third. So if we adjust third, I mean, we could. You could really mess through it, then you'd have to adjust fourth again, whatever, whatever. But this is actually pretty good. And what you see here is a bit of a stagger, which I know Marlon's working on. I don't know if Marlon's still here in the chat. But Marlon's actually been working on a type of stagger like this, where you can see the gears have a, a drop like that. And uh, yeah, so this is actually pretty good tuned. There's just one final thing we're gonna do here um, that you need to know when you're adjusting uh, your race speeds. So this let's uh, first of all we're going to put six gear where it tells you that we're going to get the highest top speed so only thing we're looking at now is 167.5 167.6 167.7 we're going to adjust this till it gives us the highest of that number all right so now it's going back down so 167.7 is the fastest this truck will go perfect kate perfect in like in all perfect if everything was perfect in a perfect world this truck would be able to go 167.7 miles per hour. But in real life, it's going to take forever for this truck to get up there. So when you're actually racing, you don't want your top speed in your final gear as long as possible. Because it'll be it'll feel neutered. It'll feel very weak. The truck will actually get there given enough time. But we're racing. We don't have time to wait for the truck to get up to its highest top speed. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to back that gear off of there to make it just more aggressive so we can get faster through it. We're going to sacrifice a little bit of top end for more acceleration because, well, it's just what you have to do. You'll get faster times if you can get, you know, the, you get up to a faster speed faster is more important than having a higher overall top speed. So we're going to back off of this chart a little bit. So let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it like maybe two thirds the length of fifth gear, which is about there. You could even go half the length of fifth gear and that'd be really aggressive. Something like that looks pretty good. And we didn't even lose very much. Like 
167.7 was where we were at in a perfect world. And we're at one, like super aggressive here in six gear. We're at 167. And I'm pretty happy with that. 167.2, 167. So that's how I would adjust. Um, that's how I would adjust the gears here. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. If you have any questions about how to tune a transmission, you're welcome to hit me up. Let's let's take this one for a drive just to see how it runs. All right, so basically we already know from the benchmarks that this is the best we're gonna get, zero to 100. Um, zero to 60, it's, our, it's this is as good as it gets. We looked at it, we watched all the benchmarks. We already know it's perfect, zero to 60, zero to 100. The only thing we wanna look at is does it work in six gear? So I'm gonna jump over to the highway. All right, so let's see how six gear looks. Got up to zero to 60 pretty fast. It's getting through from 60 to 100 reasonably fast as well. Takes the fourth gear. And here we go. We're going to keep an eye on fifth and sixth gear. Fifth is pretty aggressively moving through there. We're not bogged down. It doesn't look like the car is messing up at any. Still building speed. There we go into sixth. And we're, that's what you want to see. You want to see when you shift into sixth, it's continuing to build momentum. If you're sixth or fifth gear or any of your gears, if any of your gears are too long, you'll know because you shift into them and it'll stop accelerating. So uh, by keeping the gears aggressive, we keep it moving forward. And we're going uphill a little bit there, but let, we're gonna go back downhill here again. There you go. In perfect situations, we hit over 168 miles an hour. So that's it. I would say these, these gears are tuned pretty well. Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to go back and tune the rest of this truck up, uh, how I would tune an off-road truck. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So with um, off-road tires, we don't actually need this much PSI in it. I would drop it down to um, 17, 20, something like that. Just less than this. It's going to affect your 0 to 60 times, 0 to 100 times. Harder tires will accelerate better. Um, but, fuck it, we'll just keep it here. I would say for most off-road builds, you would want to drop these down. You know, we are going to drop it down. <clears throat> That's probably pretty good. The gears are adjusted just fine. We have already know that. The alignment. All right, so if you read this description over here, it says adjusting caster enhances straight line stability with positive caster. You, your only options here are positive caster. They don't give you any negative caster. This is all positive caster. With positive caster, the steering axis is inclined to rearward because negative camber increases as the suspension compresses and or the tires move through the steering lock, increasing positive caster lets you run less negative camber. This results in a straight up and down tire while driving straight ahead, which is good for accelerating and braking, and provides a de desirable amount of negative camber while cornering. So basically what it says is positive camber is good. Uh, now I googled it and they said the most positive caster you can get is the best way to run for exactly the reasons they've said uh here's your you get a straight up tire with less negative camber for braking and accelerating and you get a good amount of negative camber when turning by running a good front caster a high front caster angle so we're always going to run a seven i always run a seven every single time seven degrees period the end that's how i tune maybe you can convince me to do otherwise but that's what i do now this is an off-road truck I typically run some camber. Um, let's see what happens. The, so the rear camber is, so when it's at zero, it's literally the tire is straight up and down. That's what that means. Camber is straight up and down. That means the bottom of your tire is making flat contact with the ground in a straight line. And by running a front, a high front caster angle, we can do that. It allows us to do that, but we're gonna run it. I usually run it at negative 0.5. And if you read this here, it actually says to start with about five degrees of negative camber, 0. 0.5 degrees of negative camber front and rear. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put it right there. And unless I run into any issues, I'm gonna keep it right there. And then we don't need to adjust the toe unless you run into some, um, if you don't have enough turn in or you don't have enough stability. Um, basically when you're tuning here a lot of these things do the exact same thing it's funny 
like your differential helps with turn in, oversteer and understeer, your arrow, well, different. But your rebound damping and stiffness affects your understeer and oversteer. Your springs affect your understeer and oversteer. Your anti-roll bars affect the understeer versus oversteer. All of this stuff affects your understeer versus oversteer. That's basically all of it's doing the same thing. So more or less, you can set a lot of these wherever you're most comfortable. Like I like to run stiff springs in a racing setup. This isn't a racing setup, so I'm just going to leave these alone. One thing I would do... Um, one thing that you can do, and, and I'm going to do here, so we're racing off-road. It's 17 inches is pretty high. If this wasn't already at 17, I would move this ride height all the way up. Let's see what it is. 19? Yeah, so I'm just going to leave it there. 17 is really high, but if it wasn't, I would move that all the way up. That's pretty good there. You can actually put some rake on it, uh, lower the front a little bit if you like. And that actually, look at that, it, it moved up our 0 to 60 and 0 to 100 times. So we're going to go ahead and do that um, with the springs. So sometimes what I'll do with the springs, and we're going to apply this setup. So what I'll do with, the, with my springs is we'll take a look at the car, right? And you can see here, this says that 52% of the weight is at the front of the car. So when I'm tuning, I want the car to be... Um, to have 52% of the spring tension in the front because 52% of the weight is in the front. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make some small adjustments to the springs. And I actually don't want to make them very stiff. So I'm not going to use the entire chart. One way to do that... One way to do that is to go up here and say 501 and then take that 501 and multiply it you could take that 501 and multiply it by 0.52 and that gets you 260.52 now, that gets you 260.52. You take that 501, multiply it by 0.52, and that puts you at 260.52. But I actually don't want to tension this. I don't want to make it any higher than it is. So 222.5, we're actually going to do some different math here. We're going to do proportions. So how you do this is you set up your 222.5 over 0.52. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to set up a proportion so the front is at 0.52 and the back is at 0.48. I'm going to put 222.5 over 0.52. And then I'm going to go equals X over 0.48. It's a simple proportion. Let me see if I can. If, can you guys see that? So what I have here is 222.5 over 0.52 equals X over 0.48. And let me break out my calculator again. So what I'm doing is I'm basically setting 22.5 at 52, and then I'm going to set my rear number at X, whatever it is, whatever 48% is. So uh, let me go ahead and just do the math real quick. Oh, shit, that's calendar, not calculator. <laughs> Calendar's not going to help. Where's my damn calculator? All right, fuck it. I'll spell it out. Calculator. All right, so here we're going 222.5 times 0.48 equals 106.8 divided by 0.52. 106.8 divided by 0.52 equals 205.4. So the number we want for the back. So if we're going to say that 222.5 is 52% of the number we want, 48% of that same number is 205.4. And there we go. So that's proportionate. That's how we set that up. Those springs, the front one is at 52, the back one's at 48. Not proportionate to the entire spring setup. 222.5 is not 52% of the total spring tension. We're just setting... 222.5 at 52 and then proportionately 205.4 is 48% of the same number. Hope that makes sense.
out. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of math here. Um, so for rebound stiffness and bump stiffness for off road, I actually don't like this. I would I would bump I would make the rebound stiffness somewhere around eight and the the bump the front and rear rebound stiffness somewhere between eight and ten. Um, and then the bump for off road I do like this. We want our bump stiffness in a rear in a in an off road vehicle to be about in the ones just like this is. I don't like these front numbers, but I don't tune enough off road to change it without testing it. So we're gonna test it on some jumps and see how it works. Oh, and here's one other thing I would do. Um, so when I'm tuning rear wheel drive for, or all wheel drive for racing, I always get better turn in response by doing a super stiff rear anti roll bar. We're not gonna do it here because it's off road racing but we're gonna go ahead we're gonna test this setup just the way it is because i like the springs the springs are great oh this is the last thing we need to do the differential so we're gonna check the center balance here uh we always want to push it towards the rear if possible so let's just keep an eye on our zero to 100 time see if it gets faster we're gonna use the there you go look at that went from nine eight three nine nine eight zero three we're gonna go to the rightmost one that gives us the fastest time possible look how fast it's dropping down nine seven one three nine six seven seven we we made it past our nine sixes like who knew we were going to get into the nine sixes when we started this we're getting into the nine fives look at that man just by adjusting the center balance the truck is flying now we just adjusted so much faster the car is so much faster than it was just seconds ago by adjusting the center balance and we're going to keep pushing that to the right until it goes slower again and i think we're at that point nine four nine seven yeah there we go so that's it at 71 percent center balance we're running a nine four we were just running at 50 percent we're running a nine eight look at that that's crazy nine four from a nine eight at 71 percent center balance we're gonna apply that anyways let's test the truck out great All right, so what I want to do is I just want to test the truck in a jump. So I want to see what happens when I jump this truck because it's an off-road tune. I want to make sure that when it jumps, it doesn't do something stupid. So we're going to take it to a little track that we know has jumps in it, really big jumps, and that's this one here. This is called Urban Cross Country Circuit. It has huge jumps in it. When you land, the truck will either flip or break or you'll die from the impact we're gonna go over here and make sure this truck doesn't do something stupid when it jumps and that's the last bit of tuning we need to do for an off-road build now if there's any of the concepts that I'm tuning with that you have you want to discuss or you want to learn more about you can join us at the not fooling around crew discord server there's a link to that in my bio um, there's some really good tuners in there with me and we're always discussing tune theory um, trying to get, become better tuners. So if that's something that interests you, you're welcome to join us there. Not bad, not bad. One more jump to test it on. We are racing against unbeatable Drivatars here. Son of a bitch. Alright, this is the real test here. Hey yo! <laughs> yeah, okay, worked out good. And these are unbeatable driver tours that we're racing against, and we're already up here in second place. I like that. I like it. 
and the car looks to be jumping really well so we don't have to adjust anything if there were having issues with jumping i would have turned up the rebound damping which is the and when you're going to damping settings the top one is rebound the bottom one is bump i would have turned up the rebound to about eight or ten on both front and the rear probably a little more on the front than the rear but this truck is behaving perfectly we're not going to adjust anything this one is good it's good little daddy just chill just chill little daddy just chill ah that's what's up bully And that's the Toyota 4Runner tune. I'm going to save that. You guys can use it if you'd like. Uh, my name is Mike. You can catch me on Twitch at stillnfac. That's one word. And on YouTube at not fooling around crew. That's two words. We're just going to finish up the race. Uh, get a nice little dub under the belt. And and then I'll, I'll save the setup and give you guys the share code. I appreciate everybody watching and hanging out with me while I tune this. If you want to keep watching the channel, I'm going to jump in. You know what? I'm going to catch up with everybody in-game. See if anybody's in-game wants to hang out. And then... Oh, no! <laughs> Did you see that? Yo, he just glitched through the fucking... The whole entire world. <laughs> Still winning. The game can't even beat me with cheat me. You can't even cheat me to beat me. <laughs> fucking bitch. They got to cheat me to beat me, man. Come on. All right, that's it. Dominating, dominating performance from the Turd Pro. The Turd Pro. That's Turd Pro right there. It says TRD Pro. All right. Now, let's go ahead and save the tune. I got you, Flame. All right. So, that was pretty good. Ran a 101. The dude behind me in this Bronco. We were in a decent 59. I ran a terrible best lap. The guy ran a 55. This is how you know that driving tars cheat. Anyways. Let's go back to the house. We're going to save this tune. If you guys want to use it, you're welcome to do that. Let's see. Um, campaign accolades. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you guys before we get going. Just want to show you one more thing. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. You can see I was racing on unbeatable, anti-lock on, simulation, traction off, stability off, automatic, full driving line, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That was an unbeatable race we just did. Destroyed them, by the way. Destroyed them, easily. Yeah, we're going to call it still an FAC tune. Thanks, man. It was a good race. I, I like, you know, I could have gone either way. I could have made a bad tune. I mean, everything I did was what I would normally do, so I was confident that it was going to be good, and I'm just glad that it, it showed out as well as it should have doesn't always show out well you know what i mean you could have had a bad race anyways keyword one is going to be um good all around because it is good all around keyword two is also going to be good all around description is going to be tuned by still nfac on twitch and you can always catch me on twitch at still nfac which is one word and on youtube at not fooling around crew that's two words now we're going to go into custom tuning and we're going to, let's see, Tune Browser. We're going to search. Where's the backspace at? Search. And by creator, T-H-E space N-F-A-C. And search for that guy. Here we go. Now the share code for this tune, if you want to give it a try. This is the share code is 141 187 Toyota 4Runner, Turd Pro, at B700, B700 tune. All right, so that's it. My name is Mike. Uh, you can catch me on Twitch at Stealing FAC and on YouTube at Not Fooling Around Crew. Thanks for watching, everybody.